Hey everyone, you're listening to the Anime Izakaya Podcast. This week we have a special episode where we'd each discuss our top 5 shows of 2019. Will some of your favorite shows make our list? Will they even be mentioned? Will Sorter make any of the list? All will be revealed today on the podcast. Sit back, relax, and hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the Anime Izakaya Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Stren. <laughs> joining me today, we have Stren. I forgot, this, is, this isn't just video. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, that's Stren. Next up, we have Brian. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Next up, we have Taylor. Hello. Next up, we have Brian. All right, no, no, sorry. Next up, we have Pooh. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> That's racist. That's me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Finally, we have Sasha. <laughs> Bonjour. All right, we're already off to a great there start. We're off to a great start. <laughs> That's what I just said, you bitch. <laughs> It's funny because Trent is the only one that's drinking, right? So okay, okay. Nobody needs to know this. So this is a special episode of the Anime <clears throat> Isekai podcast. Usually we do a weekly show talking about the episodes we just watched, but today, up, yeah, it's just today we're uh, doing our top five animes of 2019. And so where I get started right away, um, just the format of the show, we're just gonna go through just each show that made it to our list, and then at the end. We're all gonna uh, individually list off our top fives. So the first uh, show we're talking about is Demon Slayer. This made a lot of people's uh, top all list. Ours. Yep, all basically all of ours. Everyone. So yep, this is the only show that has all all of us uh, in agreement <laughs> to a show. This yeah. is the show. <clears throat> so I guess like I'll start by saying that uh, like this show was like pretty huge like in popularity this year, but. I want to say it's not just because we, we didn't find it just because it's popular because we all thought like it was really good and had merits on its own. So, um, I guess like I just I was go around asking everyone like what's like what was your favorite thing about Demon Slayer like this year or why would you why did you put it on your list? I'll start with Stren. Uh, me um, yes. For me, it's uh well for, first thing you'll notice animation top notch. Um, another one is uh. Finding a TV show where you actually like all the characters, where you can either feel for them or their like backstories where they actually make sense, they're not just something that's completely random. Uh, first one that comes to mind is uh, I think one of my favorite backstory was uh, of probably of Zenny too, um, with him where it's just basically it's like it's like when you go through a backstory, you just assume somebody like they know like uh, all their moves or whatever there is, but then it's basically Zenny awesome. like he's OP when he but he's only OP with one move and that's it. Um, I also, the, also the, the, the story, it's, it, it, it's like a shonen show, but I just felt like it's, uh, it's different than a lot of the things you would see in Shonen Jump. Cause uh, I mean, I know like Shonen Jump's been kind of getting like a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say dark, but more bloody, uh, not bloody, but it's just like, where it's not just like, uh, what's a show back in the day that was just like kid friendly. Um, Hunter, Hunter, uh, Dragon Ball. I'll just say like Dragon I mean, Ball Z. Naruto had a lot of blood too. Character, so I don't know, huh? I mean, Naruto had a lot of blood in it too. So. Yeah, but there was really not. Uh, but I mean, well, when it gets to Sasha, maybe Sasha can like talk more about that because, uh, or or even Brian, um, because I didn't watch like the full Naruto. I basically just like uh, you know, read the manga for that. Then I just ended up switching to the anime for Shippuden partially. Um, but I don't know. It was like just from like the, the start to the beginning. There wasn't really like a down episode for me at all. Um, it always just seemed like there's either something that's, that's going on that you care about, um, it, no filler. Um, uh, I guess that would be my first, kind of like my, off the top of my head. Okay. Uh, um, Alright. And then we'll head next to Taylor. What would, what did you like about Demon Slayer this year? Um, well, of course the animation. I agree with starting on that point. I don't really watch a whole lot of UFOTA Ball. I don't watch any of the Fate series. So to me, it was very exciting. <laughs> Um, but I really like that they went into the backstories for all the villains that they went against, and I thought they were good backstories. And for me, Tanjiro, best boy of like the decade. Like I absolutely love him. <laughs> decade, wow, that's of the decade. Praise. I love him. Okay. And uh, he, like he, he is so stuck to his morals, but he also 
recognizes that there's a lot of moral gray area. He's not just on one side or the other, and I really appreciate that about him. And then, um, additionally, I agree with Threaten again that almost all the characters are awesome. <laughs> I like them all a lot. There's a couple that I think that humor misses it for me, and it's a little bit forced, but otherwise, they're all very likable. There's pretty wide cast. They introduce a bunch of new characters at the end of the season. Uh, we just kind of got a, a preview of them, but I th- I'm hoping for good things from them as well. They've done well so far. All right. And then um, we we'll, head, we'll go next oh. to Sasha. What would you like about Demon Slayer? So I'm actually going to slightly, slightly disagree with Taylor. Like most of what you said, I agree with, but I think the humor was one of the aspects I actually liked a lot. I uh, didn't say all the humor. I've linked it to one character. The, the humor, oh, okay. okay. I really but like uh, yeah, I, I liked specifically uh, when certain characters would get other characters' names wrong or when, <laughs> you know, me- medical doctors who medical doctors, uh, medical assistants who were supposed to help you out would carry your body and punch you in the face at the same time. So I, I found the the humor actually like well-placed. I thought it wasn't like uh, overly done. Like in Naruto, as much as I love it, oftentimes they try so hard for certain aspects of humor where it falls flat. So here I really liked it. Um, but you know what I really liked? I, I enjoy the fact that it, it just got to the point quicker than most shonen do. And you know, you go through One Piece, you go through Dragon Ball, you go through Naruto, and the pacing can often really ruin the experience for you. With this show, I never felt like the pacing was an issue. And I just like the fact that, hey, this is the villain. You either have the ability to kill him or you don't. And if you don't, something's going to happen. You're going to have to pay a consequence for that. And so uh, I, I really love that aspect of it amongst the other things that people have said. Nice. Okay. And then we're ahead straight to Koo. What did you like about Demon Slayer? Uh, well, the thing that stood out to me the most is uh, the MC. Um, he was really likable, really humble guy. Uh, I feel like I can really relate to him. Um, his actions, too, and his motivations, it felt like it kept you drawn in the whole time. He didn't really steer away from it. So just overall, the MC kept me interested in the anime. Uh, you know, artwork was great. Storyline was executed fairly well. And I do agree that... Um, out of all the the shows this year, that the unique cast that they had was uh, was really nice. Top notch. Um, top. I wouldn't say top notch, but uh, okay, it, it was it was nice how they each had their own strong points, and then they they played to them fairly well. There wasn't any filler at all. I feel like um, so for twenty four episodes, they I felt like it streamlined pretty well from the beginning to end, and with the second season coming up or. The, the movie come out that extends to the next arc. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully they don't drop the ball with that. All right. I don't think... Oh, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, like for, for you photobo movies, like I don't think they've ever actually dropped the ball. It, it, if anything, it looks even better than the show. Um, uh, I mean, you never know. I don't want to put my <clears> hopes up too high and then have them, you know... I mean, maybe this is the one. Who knows? Yeah, you never know. <laughs> All right. Well, and then we're going to head to Brian. So what did you like about Demon Slayer this year? Oh, animation, hundred percent top notch. It was amazing. Uh, fight fight scenes were just awesome. Uh, when they the the little mini training arcs that they always had, like going from one villain to the next, was always cool too. Because I think in the beginning they had some shit, and then later on, and like the two thirds, they had one too. But just amazing fights that was like literally the best part i'm just a simple-minded fool if you got good fighting i'm good you got six yeah. packs going on i'm awesome we're good 100 <laughs> percent. all right so and then i'll just um i'll close off this section so uh i'll i, I want to agree with both like Koo and sasha that i like both the, the main character and i thought the pacing was really good too because the beginning we because the beginning of the show we had like after that intense like first episode you had to have Tanjiro go on like a training arc, but it didn't feel like it dragged on. It felt like it was perfectly timed. And then with him going to like the the demon the like the selection exam, like that whole section felt um really good pace too. So I really enjoy that. I also yeah, I also really enjoy Tanjiro as a character because a lot of times in anime we have a lot of like big brother like um like main characters, but like this like, Tanjiro, he actually 
he actually acts like a big brother, like as a leader to like his siblings, and he puts that qualities to like other people too. So like, so he instantly knows how to care for other people, and like that's a really good like trait to have in the main character. Like, and that's what we miss in a lot of main characters. A lot of times, a lot of times, like a lot of the main characters, they're so lost in what to do. But like Tanjo, just like he just instantly knows how to, like, like how to take care and like, protect people. So that's a really nice thing to see. Yeah, especially how it felt real. It didn't feel overwhelming. It didn't feel over the top. But... Yeah, and it, it um, actually had like the it had the feeling too, like when he had to, like protect and everything. Like you didn't actually know if somebody was gonna die. Like it, it had it just had like the feeling where it's not like just like Dragon Ball Z, even uh, or like another show where it's just like you never really see death. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> this this actually felt like there was always like that kind of like kind of scare in every episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so yeah, so we all had. Demon Slayer on our list, so this is all like a title we highly recommend. One last stand out to 2019, so really good. I'm pretty sure like when people look at back at this year, this will definitely like be like a show that will stand out to people and like they'll like you'll remember. People won't forget this one, though. Yeah, yeah. So I, like, I do think there's gonna be a lot more to, to the show in the future as well. I mean, you don't you don't just do like the manga sales and everything else, and just like it's just not gonna get really like un- unnoticed. Yeah. So like, because like, people are already doing like the best of the decades, like. Um, list, but like when people look back at yeah, the 2018, this will definitely pop up. That's it, that's how influential this show is, and for both the popularity and like the qualities. So, should we give our number of uh, where we had it in our list? I mean, we're gonna say at the end, so if you if you want, be... uh, okay, you don't want to just like say it like uh, I, during the, the you want to do it here, that's fine too. Thoughts, guys? I had um... Demon Slayer as my number two anime of the year, okay, okay, two for me as well. Mine was two as well. I uh, had it as number three. Um, there was actually two more animes this year that I thought were a little bit better. I had yeah, I had as number three as well. I had number one. All right, so that's gonna be it for Demon Slayer, and then we're gonna move on over to Mob Cycle season two. And so we had four people who put that on our list, and so. Yes. I'm a sorry I'm a friends and he's like the one that me champions. But Sasha, okay. Oh. In a way, okay, I would love to say stuff about my mob, mob cycle, but like I know like we've talked about it like like throughout like the season, like when it was actually airing. But uh, I know but Sasha, you know, he just he he actually just watched this uh, a couple days ago. Okay, well so start with Sasha then. Full thoughts on mob cycle. Well, well start with so. Sasha. What what did you think of Mob Cycle and why'd you put on your list? Alright, this is uh this is very rare for me to say because typically when you watch a shonen to speak to Brian, mostly you watch it for the action, like the character development, the building up, the humor. It's all set up and it's all complementary to the action. Mob Psycho season two is the first time I, I can say without a doubt that if it was just a show about Mob and Reagan and it involved zero action and it involved them exercising demons or fighting them, I would still find it a highly entertaining show. Uh, I think at its core, Mob does something that most shonen can lack, and that is like they draw you in on this deeper level. And what I loved about season two is the fact that I was just rooting for Mob. I was just rooting for him to socialize and for him to create these bonds that he was looking for and for him to develop. I can't say that same thing. I'm not like look, I'm not always rooting for Goku to level up to Super Saiyan <laughs> next level or for Naruto to find that next sage mode. But in this case, I just cared so much about the characters themselves and fell in love with them that uh, it it really just brought you near and dear. And the action was secondary to the character development, which is really, really rare, at least from like the way I appreciate shows. So I cannot say enough about just the way the show draws you in and you're you're on this ride with them and you're rooting for them. And um, sometimes uh, you just... You feel like wow, this is a lost art. But Mob Psycho, I was I was blown away. Like first three episodes were decent, and then after that, the show really picks up. So that's why it's just so well done. I just want to say, first episode I thought was really good. So it, I, I agree. I'm saying the average of them. Yeah, like, the first episode had me like almost teary eyed, but then episodes two and three, I was kind of like, where's the season going? <laughs> and then it, it really picks up from there. Okay. <sighs> There were so many episodes I had just tears running down my face. <laughs> yeah, no, it was uh, the the development is 
just it 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 gets you nice that was nicely put so now i very good i want to put the discussion towards Stren now because Stren's the other person who champions this shit series yeah. so i want you to give your thoughts why is this so highly regarded for you for this well, year for me it's uh I, it was like kind of like um kind of piggy, piggybacking off of sasha when he was saying where uh action comes secondary that was the same thing for me as well when i was talking to sasha and i think i've told you guys as well um while this even while like the series was airing or when it was done but i said i think i think it was episode seven where it's like one of my favorite anime episodes of all time and it had nothing to do with action um i, I believe it was the episode where um reagan was dealing with his like whole thing where he was a fake he was because he was a fake uh i think psychic or esper um and he was having he was having to be in, like, interviewed with like all those people at the thing and then uh and then later on then he gets uh this is when like mob and, and him were having their fight and uh, they they had like the whole kind of like break off and then but the mob ends up coming back and kind of like saving him in a way and then it was like the whole thing where um you just felt like you got closer with both of them where it's just like uh that mob was able to see past all that and he and then basically just like how reagan was actually like a really good guy even though he was trying to like just jip people from from uh just being like a fake esper uh but anyway that was like one of my favorite episodes also this was the season that put uh that i put mob and reagan both in my top 10 like favorite characters of all time on my anime list and it's just like the, the whole time it's just like like the love mob loved reagan it was just basically those like like uh you find a lot more of, of reagan's backstory and it wasn't just like where you just kind of see him as just like a, a person that's just um uh like you know uh jipping people from like actual real work um of like esper or like when he was just doing like fake his like fake esper moves of uh erasing people in photoshop and whatnot <laughs> um i don't know it was just like uh and like how I mentioned earlier as well, I was like, I don't know how many episodes brought me kind of like to just to, just to tears. Where it was uh, so much character development. I mean, animation, like animation wise, was just top notch as well, and it's in, in its own way. And it's just like I thought it was just like I mean, by far like my, my favorite episode, like favorite like anime uh, series of not even just the this year, but just like like of all time. Wow, that's a lot of high praise. Dude, loved it, and I didn't. Even, and I didn't even want to watch Mob Psycho at the beginning. Oh my God, <laughs> so, because of the animation. But then uh, my I was God. very, very wrong. Okay. Oh, so you're saying the animation's not the? Uh... Oh God, no, it is. It's because okay. when you first see like the, you know, when you first see like some of the, like, just like the animation in general, not even the fight mm -hmm. scenes, you're kind of thinking like, what, what the hell is this shit? But then you end up having you have, like once you actually watch it, like it's just like the the, the fights in it, like the the animation, the fights are top notch. But then just like how they develop the characters is just is just so good. All right. And then we're head over to Brian. So give us your thoughts. Why why did you why'd you put this on your list and what makes it so special for you? Oh, like Sasha said earlier, uh, like I was just rooting for Mob so hard. Not <laughs> not really to socialize, but like just beat some ass, dude. Like this kid is so strong. I love that he has the, <laughs> he has the most potential. It's like this kid is just a legitimate god, and people don't know it until they get just espered, like super powered to the fucking mouth. It was great. I just the the progression of Mob as a character too. I, it was like one of my favorite parts. Like going from season one to season two, like this kid has just grown just so much as a person. It was it was just a great character to watch. Nice. All right, and then um, so I also had on my list as well, and. I just want to say, like, before this, like, I actually didn't really think much about Mob Season 2. I, I forgot a lot about it. So it wasn't Fair. until, like, these guys started reminding me. And then I actually uh, listened to it on another anime podcast where people are, are talking about it. And actually got me thinking about, like, actually what happened in Season 2. And, and yeah, like, the, definitely the characters are the strongest parts for Mob and, and Reagan. Like, like, a lot of it was uh i mean we talked a lot about ma but reagan got a lot of um a lot of character development as well this season i think that was really important just for their relationship and and there's i mean there's like the animation as well and like like there's a good amount of fights but yeah like definitely um i was always excited like watching every episode and i think just like yeah just watching the character development between mob and reagan is really important for this season and so that's it's like definitely the highlights of season two. Yeah, the, um, the, I, I'm sorry. There was a thing. Uh, there was a part that I completely forgot to mention. It's like a lot of the shows 
as well as like when you see like the let's say like uh there's a, a group in the show that's called um body improvement club oh yeah the usually wholesome those, group and usually those type of clubs in in like any other animes are always like the boys they're always the people that bring other people down but this is actually the support group that mob had where they actually like they were wanting this guy to succeed and they kept making him sound like oh man this guy's gonna surpass us and everything else where they were actually they, they just had his back the entire show when normally these would be like the boys that would act, or these would be the type of people that would bully who mob is and I thought that that was also like a really uh, like a really like neat thing too. And like the Body Improvement Club is awesome as well. They were they were awesome. um, really like influential the first season. I don't really remember what happened in them second season. So. Dude, Dimple. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't want to. I, I completely forgot that we were we were trying to avoid spoilers, and I just spoiled yeah. the hell out of one episode. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. We'll take your word that they're that they're really good this season as well. Because I like them too. I think they're a really nice thing to have in the show. And so I think that's gonna be it for Mob. Wait, do we all want to give um, what we what we rate Mob I don't think... in our top five? Uh, yeah, number sure. one. Same. Number, number, number one. one. Wow. So number one for Stride and Sash. Then Brian. <laughs> I had a four. I'm sorry. I had it as uh, four as well. So. I hate you guys. <laughs> so that's our, that's it for Mob Cycle, and then we're we'll move on next to Villain Saga. And Sasha, you just finished this show. Like literally, was it yesterday? Yeah. Uh today. Today. today sir. Oh wow, you finished it today. Yep. Okay. So I want to hear your thoughts, like your fresh thoughts on what you just finished. Yes. Uh Vinland Saga is I think unusual for an anime because it tackles actual history and then it combines the stylistic nature of anime fights and it puts the two together and uh, tells a really great story. Do you what know um, a lot? Do you know like any of the history behind Vinland Saga? I, I don't. Okay. It is all centered around uh, the Vikings from Denmark invading uh, England, England yep. during the. I'll, yeah, I, during, can, I, think, I can fill you in tomorrow when we do our recap. Then, okay. So, um, I thought it was fascinating. I would compare it to. I have not seen the show Vikings, but I would compare it to a Game of Thrones esque show, where as much as it's about the violence, it's also a, a tale about characters, and not everyone that's bad is necessarily a hundred percent evil and not everyone that's good is necessarily a hundred percent good um so there's a, a lot of different characters to get attached to uh i thought it was really well done it's 24 episodes and it doesn't really drag at any point um however i so i did go online just to see people's thoughts about it and i, I did notice myself unpopular opinion about a very specific character that goes <laughs> through a dramatic change oh, okay. a lot of people were were fans of this change I, however, thought it seemed unrealistic, and I did not like this change. Um, but I still like the show in and of itself. So uh, the action was crazy. The characters, like I said, there, there's plenty to get attached to. Um, and I thought the story was just overall very interesting. It, it felt, um, not it felt, but it, it was a, a lot about betrayal and deceit and tactics and planning. And uh, it, it was it was good. It was a good change of pace. It's something that doesn't feel very anime and although it is, it's like it, it is extremely anime, but it doesn't feel like it. Um. Well, yeah, I just want to mention too, like the because the original manga, what originally came out in two thousand five, and so a lot of like the writing was like from way back then, but it's still like held up nicely today. So that that's mm. very nice. And so I, I was just to ask Josh, like, this is like one of the show. Like, would you recommend this show to someone who hasn't watched much anime? Would you since there's like a good like gateway show? I would. I actually would. Uh, there's only a couple shows I would re recommend that way. I'd probably say Cowboy Bebop, Death yeah. Note, and then this show. Yeah, so, like, that's... I mean, I just want to mention for that for myself. That's, like, another, like, like high praise for the series. Is that, like, it's... it's. I think it's a good... It's, like, a good show to, like, elevate the medium. Where, like... Like, is like... Just because, you know, it's anime, like... Um, there's still a lot of good things that this show does. Like that's outside of like the tropes that we usually see in anime. So, yeah, it definitely cuts down on the regular comedic timing and the tropes of characters' thoughts always being, you know, kind of like hyperbolized. So, uh, it is more straightforward storytelling, but not meaning that's not complex. Uh, just a lot less, I guess, uh, glitz and glamour, and just kind of getting to the characters and moving the plot along and doing it in a familiar way. It feels a lot more like a TV show in cartoon form than like an anime version of a story. 
Yeah, you don't have to have like a intimate knowledge of all of the Japanese terms that might come through other shows, plot arcs that you might be familiar with from other shonens or seinens or anything like that. It's, mm-hmm. yeah, I agree. It's very much like watching a normal show. Nice. All right. And so um, we're at, we'll uh, pass over to Taylor Land. So give us your thoughts. So why did you put this on your list and what makes Vivian Saga so special that stood out for you this year? Um, I guess that for me, I would say it was a, famil- a, a period of time that I wasn't overly familiar with. And so I liked learning about it. Um, I know there are parts that deviate from actual reality, but it was still very interesting to get involved in that world. And it's made me interested to learn about it more. Um, I do know the character that Sasha's talking about that he doesn't necessarily like the character development of. I liked it. I don't... Um, I mean, I guess you could go either way on it if it was realistic or not, but I personally liked it just because um, he he kind of, I feel like, was the person that brought this first season forward because um, his first season was called The Prologue, and I feel like it was really about his story to move it into the next level, and it felt like it worked for me. Um, animation was great. The music was very good. Um, really, it, there's not a whole lot to add that hasn't already been said. All right. Well, we have to pass on to Brian then. Brian, what do you got to add? Man, there's so much. It was great. People getting heads cut off, limbs cut off, blood, <laughs> gore. It was amazing. That's pretty much it. No. Uh, the the character progressions of like some of these characters, most of them, most of them are likable to an extent, while other ones you just wish they would die. <laughs> but, you know, uh, that just comes with some of the characters, I guess. But, um, yeah, the character development is pretty good. The storytelling is good. The fights were amazing. Um, just it was just all in all, the animation was top notch, mint. Um, yeah, I just just want this anime to keep going. It's actually like one of my. It's actually like just a great anime. Like I didn't think I'd enjoy this anime as much as I do, but holy shit, it's it's so fucking good. All right, and then I'll close it off here for my thoughts. I just want to mention, um, this is it was just animated by Wit Studios, so the same studio behind uh, that did Attack on Titan. So like a lot of high praise from the animation. I really like the like a lot of the backgrounds. Just like you really felt like you're in England a lot of times, even especially like when before it snowed. Like a lot of, like the forest scenery, I really enjoyed that. And same with Iceland, and that looked really nice. And then also I mentioned too that um like usually even in Saga it's like gets highly like the manga was always highly praised along with like Berserk and um Gantz as like 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 kind of like the big three like more mature manga so it's really nice that this finally gets like an anime and it also doesn't get like it actually actually doesn't well unlike Berserk so that was really nice and then um I didn't I knew a little bit about the history of like this time period so i was interested in like seeing how how it would work out but it really doesn't really matter if you don't know about the history it's like the characters are really there to they really like carry the show and like and it's not just about like just like the vikings raiding and batting all the time yeah it really is you're following like the characters throughout this journey and it really and like everything really happens by the characters so it's really nice seeing their journey and there's a lot a lot of the moments was from like each character and like having their moments in the show so it's like like i'd say yeah highly recommend and like and like this is like a such a good like gateway anime that we need but that we, we just definitely need more of and so i appreciate like having this like finally animated like especially considering how it has such a high like status as like a great a great manga so I'm glad the anime turned out well. Oh, and then um, if you want to give like what we put uh, Vivian Saga on our top list, uh, I put it as number two on my list. Uh, for me, it was a four. Four as well. I think mine was a five. Really, Brian? I'm surprised. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, it was it was so closely call for me just because okay. there's actually other animes that were super good that I was into so <laughs> all right and so that's it for Vivian Saga and then we're gonna move on next to Promise Neverland and then I think Taylor has one this is the one that, that had the most to say so I'm just gonna pass it off to her so what do you want to say about Promise Neverland 
So I will admit that, I mean, it came out in April of this year, so it's been a little it while. I don't remember. In January. Did it really come it out in was, January? I thought it was. It was a winter uh, show, I'm pretty sure. No. Okay. Well, yeah. it was a while ago, and so I don't remember all of the details, but when I was composing the list of our top anime of the year, I was basing mine off of what did I want to see more of the most, and Promise Neverland ended for me on a level of, it, like, it felt finished. It felt like a completed first season. Um, there were some cliffhangers for sure, but it didn't feel like it was too much. And it just left me wanting to know exactly where it's going to go. Uh, there were a couple characters who branched off from the main crew and their status is really ambiguous, but basically it's a, it's a show. If you're not familiar with it about, um, these kids in an orphanage who, um, are, it's a little bit more of a sinister orphanage than it seems to be. That's really all you need to know going into it. And it was dark, which I like. Uh, but it wasn't dark for no sake. I felt like it was a world that was delved into pretty well. And the villains that were in it or the bad guys were really investigated. You, They fleshed out their backstories so you could see where they came from and why they made the decisions that they did. And another aspect that I really liked about it, too, was it kind of actually gave me a little bit of a Death Note vibe. Um, not a similar story at all. But just in terms of, like a cat and mouse effect of the first season it kind of reminded me of death note and i really like that in anime and i thought it was really well done uh i know that i saw some people that were not so into the fact that it was all based around kids because it seemed like kids the kids were very intelligent and uh i mean um, yeah but that's <laughs> anime in general yeah it's anime so i was i was okay with suspending my disbelief um and it, it just felt really well done and again, for me, animation was great. Music was great. And at the end of the day, I just wanted so much more at the end. It felt so well-rounded and fleshed out. Nice. And that's about it for me. <laughs> All right. And then, um, Brian, you also had it. So oh. let's see your, your thoughts on Promise Neverland. This show, I've never, like, just had so many hard turns in a show of just suspense <laughs> and just questions. Like, I've never... I hated watching this show currently because I was destroying myself i was like yo how are you gonna end episodes like this like these the episodes they ended so well to make you waiting wanting more for the next like week it was it was so well done the characters are just amazing characters like if they dude if i was as smart as these kids like at 12 years old or whatever the fuck oh my god i'd be a genius but i'm not so these these kids are just amazing i love them the and they're not annoying at all. They're great, right? Yeah, Brian? like these kids, they're so enjoyable to watch. Like emotions ran high. They were so high of highs. Uh, they were just depressing lows. I was like, this show is great. Like it's so good. I loved it. I've never been so on the edge of my seat on every episode because I was waiting. It's hard to talk about it without giving anything away, isn't it? Yeah, so <laughs> I, I'll just leave it at that. It's it's very good, like suspenseful, sort of mystery kind of. You know, show so. Very good. No, that was that was nicely said, Brian. So I'll give my thoughts as well, and I want to agree with Brian too that like this was a great, a lot of great suspense, and like, like I guess more susp- I was gonna say thriller, but I would say more suspense, which we usually don't get in anime as much. I feel like I guess for some reason it's, it's kind of hard to do in anime, but there's just a lot of scenes where like you just you felt you you felt the tensions that the characters felt, and so like very rare for. I mean, I guess it's rare that we see it in general, so like it gets higher praise for that, but it still does a very good job of it. And yeah, and then the characters too, they're likable. I mean, it, it mainly focuses on the three uh, characters, but it's still like, we we really get to see, um, like, we see all of them like grow like well too into, as like the, the episodes go by. And yeah, and just like, I guess like, yeah, just like the the suspenseful nature is more, more it's more of a unique um it's like sighting and like and just for the plot in general. So it's it's a nice break from like your like the general like most of the general animes we've watched. And so I just wanna give high praise to it. Yeah, and 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 then obviously the ending too was like the ending was intense. So yeah, watch all the way through. <laughs> oh I should mention should mention too by the way that both um, Promise Neverland and uh, Demon Slayer—they're both running in Shonen Jump. They're both written by uh, female authors, so 
because I'm pretty sure most people don't know that, so I'm just gonna mention that real quick. And then, um, so that's all I had to say for Promised Land. It's still like a really good show. Um, and then uh, my pick on for this was number five for me. Number one for me. Uh, three for me. All right. And then um, next we're gonna move on. We had My Hero Academia, and I think this was Shren and Sasha. So if oh look, yes. oh look, Shren's back. So Shren, we'll start with you. Yeah, so, I'm gone. Um, <clears throat> I mean, My Hero Academia part is probably gonna be pretty short. It's uh, it's just because like it's, I mean, it's a continuation. So I don't know if it technically should be kind of counted in this. You can do whatever uh, you want. That's all right. Okay. Well, I don't know. For me, it was just like. I, because like I, I don't watch Attack on Titan or Promise Neverland or Vinland Saga, so my list felt kind of shallow. <laughs> um, but I I do like uh, it, it's it's like still like you have Deku, you have like the you have the supporting cast that's just like all solid. If anything, um, that like shards like that that shows such as Sword Art lack is the the lack of a uh, of supporting cast, and Hero Academia definitely has the supporting cast. Uh, if anything, they go more in depth this season of a, f- a few of the other characters that you would maybe see them here and there. And you thought like, man, this guy's never gonna get any more screen time, and they st- they just keep showing it like uh, uh, more so this season. If anything, actually, I don't want to say too much, but something <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, you would normally think of like may- like maybe like a one episode thing, and then uh, that's good enough. Um, so I think in that sense, like uh, Hero Academia has improved on. Uh, I. I st- still like season three uh more than season four as of as of now but that can always change um uh this the 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 main the main uh villain in this seems really it's, it's a very interesting different quirk um uh it's also the what was it like the, the only part i guess like that i'm kind of like still ifing is just like or if if he on is just kind of like what like what this arc is based on which is just saving a, like you know saving a it's just yeah we'll leave it at that and um <clears throat> it's uh i guess it's i'll leave it at that all right and then sasha <laughs> you want to give us your wanna, thoughts? i'm trying not to spoil anything <laughs> um season just on season four yeah so I, I think season four starts off very promisingly and then as uh, Stratton just mentioned, there are some characters, which if you're a fan of, it's great. It's tremendous. <laughs> if, However, if you're not a fan of them or you could care less for them, then uh, yeah, it feels like it drags drags on a little bit. I will say this, though. With the highlights on these other characters, the animation quality doesn't go down. It doesn't feel like filler at all. So that's the great part. It does move the story forward. Um, I still think Season 3 had this more intense feel to it that season four had in the beginning and it's slowly lost yeah but i have yet to see what's going to happen with uh the antagonist and that's the thing that has me most excited about season four is this new antagonist with these abilities that are uh you know just kind of ridiculous but in in a in a very formidable way so overpowering way (laughs) yes yes um so season four is is good i i think if I go back through, I, I don't remember my rankings exactly, but I want to say season three was above and beyond the others. So it's it's going to be hard to match that. Um, but I'd say probably second best season, maybe. I don't know. I'd have to really go back I mean, and look. I, it's yeah. tough. I'd have to think about it. I just want to say, like, it's like, I... I didn't, like, I didn't, I didn't even consider Hero Academia just because it's still ongoing, so... Like, yeah, that's that's, yeah. that's why it's, it's, it, that's why it's, it's it's hard to do a, a 2019 list because Hero Academia is 2019 to 2020. So this season had so many like big continuous shows too. Yeah, um, it's, it's I was kind of hesitant, but I, I I threw it in there. But I mean, I would say like just being on like you guys' list, it's, it's still that's still important enough that even like an ongoing like show would still have this yeah. much influence. That yeah, I'm I'm very biased list. and I'm. I'm I'm biased and I'm a very I'm a giant fanboy. <laughs> so. that's, that's why I know it's your list. You do whatever you want. It happens. I was born with a disability where I shoot laser beams on my belly button. <laughs> so <laughs> this, I, I feel like I relate to this show a lot. All right. Or or is or is the story based on you or that character at least? Oh no, they changed the details. I, I definitely have blonde hair. I don't, I don't show it off. <laughs> 
I don't know. You're very uh, flamboyant. All right. Yes, I agree. <laughs> and then, um, real quick, what what was the number on your guys' list? I had it at four. Cinco, aka five. All right. So that's gonna be it for My Hero Academia, and then uh, we're next to Doctor Stone. I think that was Stren and Ku. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so cool. You haven't spoken in a while, so we'll, we'll hand you the. <laughs> we'll give you the floor. So his so, part's coming up later. <laughs> so, well, what's so special with Doctor Stone, and why is it on your list? Well, Doctor Stone for me was, uh, like in all honesty, from the beginning, it was more of just a regular uh, shown anatomy. Um, but it was a unique twist to it, right? It was more science involved, and if you really think about it, there's not that many animes that, uh, like specialize or just showcase mainly science aspects and uh i think the story uh wasn't that great to be honest it was kind of generic but then the the main the main character i thought he was pretty he was a pretty cool guy uh you know i i kind of like to think of myself as like a nerdy guy and i felt like i fit his character fairly well although i'm not as smart as he is so uh unfortunately i, I can't relate to him that well uh, but throughout the whole story, you know, his character progressed from this, you know, like this mad scientist or like this genius to, uh, you know, he starts to become more and more human. Um, he goes through all these crazy challenges that he has to uh, go through in this stone world of his. And um, I, don't, I don't know. It's like I said, it wasn't I don't think it was anything amazing, but it was different. And I liked it. It was it was enjoyable. Um. But yeah, I, I don't know. Sorry, you? Um, for me, it was uh, I, I mean, I just thought it was like way different. It's just like uh, there's not many, there's not too many shows that kind of go a different path from the either like the, the fighting or just like that, like that type of like top notch animation that comes with it as well. And they go more science based. I thought this was a very different show from, I mean, I guess like the the normal um, shonen shows. Uh, there's not too many where, like I said, where the main guy, like you, he basically he can't really do anything besides just be like a, he, mm-hmm. besides just like the planner, um, he he just needs kind of like the help, uh, the the kind of like the overall help from everybody else. The one weakness I thought was, uh, I mean, they had like character development for the supporting cast, but um, because there was a few characters I just didn't really care about, and I still don't really care about that much. Right. So I thought, so it's like that. I thought, I kind of thought was weak, but I thought the main character uh, as Senku was just. I, I just thought like who he was and just like how they portrayed him was just so good. Mm-hmm. Um, also, just kind of like the they had like they had uh, a solid kind of like backstory. They had uh, a solid story of just like how everything is happening. Um, it was also really cool to see just. Uh, I don't know if all of it is true, but just like just how he went about making things. Uh, um, I never went back. I never went into it. To actually like look as like okay is this actually like a real thing can this happen i just it made got... sense to me yeah oh <laughs> yes yeah. I, I just, I just, I, yeah i just took it as an anime I, I just took it as like the anime where i was like okay i'll just go with this and then there was a few parts that just blew my mind i thought this is actually pretty cool um so it's another show um where i kind of just bypassed kind of like the like the fighting i don't even know if it really has too much of like fighting scenes. I mean, there's I think some, it was more but, of just, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, more of just kind of focusing on like the science aspect of it and just kind of like uh, outwitting the the opponent, which I thought um, I thought was, was was really cool. And I did not think I would ever actually like a show that didn't have like the sweet fighting or uh, the blood and guts and everything else that Brian says that <laughs> sounds like it needs to be a part of the show. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. I think that's all I got. I I just want to uh, I just want to mentioned that like i i enjoy dr stone's well i didn't i mean just it wasn't in my top five but like i still really enjoyed the show just because like like there's a lot of good shows this year so it unfortunately couldn't make the cut for me but i really do uh enjoy the show i i really like the science aspect of it even though a lot of it is exaggerated like you have to like you know take a grain of salt and like not it's fun though take but it's it it like if you have just an interest in science but like it like it um like it scratches that itch, but doesn't get too like like bogged down in the details, and I I think that's a good thing about. So I, I wouldn't really, I don't take the criticism that like that it's that it exaggerates a lot of the science. I think it's, I I see it as more as like this is an interesting way to show like 
like science and like and just like seeing like the reasoning and like how Senku thinks. Like I think that's a really strong point in the show that makes it more exciting. I think it it kind of falls apart when they try to do like the actual fighting, because that's when like a lot of the shonen tropes comes in. But but that that, that that's un- but fortunately that's like only a small part of it. Like and I'll, and and the thing is like this show too. Um, it has a lot of like wholesome like and like really emotional moments. Like for like, a show about like for a, a show like that as it's like. It comes as like a science show. Like, there's a lot of like really like emotional moments that happens. I did not expect it to tear up as, the sh- as some of the scenes yeah, like, that I did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, there's so many, so many of those moments. So I think that's that's really good. That like because it makes because besides like the science stars, it makes like all like, the characters feel more human. Yeah, and like, and it really like it puts emphasis on the story, and just like just just being in the stone world. And so I think. Just having like those moments, those are so important for the show, and so like that's like just so besides just besides the science, like like that having that on there makes makes this really good. So so yeah, I know that I know there's parts of like uh, <clears throat> previous shows where we've actually like uh, kind of hammered uh, about how it's just like uh, where we just find it kind of like ridiculous and just funny in certain senses, but at the, it's there's certain times at the in the show where it, you just feel like it doesn't take itself that serious or as serious as other shows um, where you actually can kind of like enjoy it or just like the ridiculous or just kind of go with the ridiculousness and not actually just kind of like, it's like, Oh, that can't be a thing. And just kind of wipe it out completely where it actually fits with the, the, like how the show goes. Yeah. I, um, so I thought that's really cool. Cause the, sci- the science part, it's, it's fun. It's fun to watch. Yeah. But... Well, even like, well, there are comedy scenes as well where some of them seem ridiculous, but at the same time, it, in a way it's not taking itself, like I said, as serious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah and they have fun with it. It's just, it's just yeah, fun. It's, uh... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, I want to say it's. Uh, I'm sure you all remember this, the Magic School Bus. It's like the oh, Magic God. School Bus <laughs> anime, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, kids, we're gonna teach you how to do some things today. We're gonna teach you how to build this and build that and make this out of stuff from uh, the Stone Age. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but Magic okay, Mr. Like, Rizzo. Yeah, yeah but... we're 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 gonna go three thousand years into the future where everybody's dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Magic School Bus didn't have emotional backstories. That is true. No, yeah. no. All right. They, I may be showing my age here, but there was a couple of emotional sto- episodes on Magic School Bus. Okay. I don't remember. Um, so you got you to gotta cover us. Okay. All right. There was this one time when they went to outer space and then Arnold brought his sister or his cousin or whatever all on a field trip. And then at the very end of the episode, because his cousin was uh, hoarding all the stones from the different planets, uh, I think Pluto was the last one. Um she wasn't willing to leave all the stuff from out of space. So he, uh, the guy says, okay, well, if you really want something that much to prove you were out of space, let me take off my helmet and you can bring me back as a specimen. So uh, the guy takes off his helmet, he freezes up, what? and then they have to rush back to planet Earth to, to save him. Wow. Did he get saved? Yeah, yeah no, no, the kids, <laughs> I know. Mean, that, so, that still sounds very <laughs> intense a for a kid's show. Yeah, so, Jesus. I know, right? Dude, told you. It's an emotional moment. There are a couple, all right? Dude, okay. It's like the old, old Disney shows, man. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty <laughs> They're, they're traumatizing. Pretty dark. Yeah, they they're are. very traumatizing. You just probably don't remember it because you're a kid, but they, they had. Or memory. I blocked it from my mind because it was so traumatizing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, well, and, yeah. um, what well, what'd you guys place Dr. Still on your list? Uh, I placed it as five. Three, five. Okay. <sighs> Yeah, because it was good, but like I said, it wasn't amazing. It was kind of generic, but it was just a unique aspect that that was twisted into the story. I don't so think it was it generic was. really at all, but okay, okay. Yep. All right, so <laughs> that's gonna be it for uh, Doctor Stone, and then we're moving next to Attack on Titan. So this is technically like the it's like second half of season three because season three aired like a year before. But um, I'm gonna go first because I have a lot to say. Like, I mean, I know a lot to say, but like. This show, like I mean, this, this season of Attack on Time was so important to the story. Like, because I felt that season two kind of like, dragged on a little bit. I didn't really like it as much, but like this second part of season three, like this brought back the intensity. Kind of like, kind of like when we when Aaron first transformed into a Titan. Like, this season was just as intense as that. There are so many times where like you could not like there was a lot of cliffhangers at the end of this, every episode and like. It really brought me back to like the season one feeling that I was really missing from the show, and like a lot of important things happen, like in the show, like that just reveal like a lot of like the story, like a lot of the things, a lot of the questions we've been wondering this whole time, 
like like the whole like 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 what's in the basement and stuff like that this finally gets answered like the the answers behind like the titans and like who like 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 annie was working for and like just who who's like the real enemy and then you find out the, like, the secret behind the world they live in like this season was so important for all of that and and like and the action too was really intense like it just like like this is still like you know with seals at their best like they still like again like have like just intense animation just like the first season like so many intense moments like just and it happens like all because all, like all, all like the characters who are who are still around like like they go through so many things through this season and like and just and and just the way it ends like the way it ends like it, it's setting up for the final season and it's just it's just crazy just how much like uh, it's just how much gets like the characters have to go through just to get to do this last part and so i'm really excited for season four and then it's mainly because like season this season three like really set it up nicely and like that's yeah it's just this is just top-notch season so that's what i'm gonna say about it. i'm gonna pass over brian hopefully you feel the same <laughs> yeah for the most part it's pretty much the same thing like the especially the second part of season three like you said like it uncovered a lot of the questions that you have since season one, which was who knows how, like, it was forever ago season yeah. one happened. Season one like, was, like, and, five years ago? Like, five, six years ago? Five years later, we're finally getting, like, dude, the amount of, like, just anxiety, it was just uh, crazy. But, like, part two of season three, it has so many, like, plot opening points that it is ridiculous it's like holy shit so this is what this leads to and this connects to that and these are who these people are it's like and you get like a little bit of backstory of what the world was before too and it was just amazing the fights were so intense like you have real consequences yeah. for these characters and like people are dying and they like there's actual consequences for these people are dying and like lives are being written that's just this second part of this third season is actually just so fucking good it's just amazing i loved it i just want to say uh like if it was just like the whole season three it, like it probably wouldn't be like my number one because i think like the first part like i, I kind of forgot kind of like what happened but like it wasn't yeah. as it, it was a lot of setting up in season, yeah. season three and so it was just so, the whole thing but like I guess I, it was lucky that like part two aired like you know, in in the like, spring season like so, so I'm just gonna count part two like season three part two because this this part two is much more like a whole another level than like part one. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. And and like and did you did I mean did you like season two Brian or season two? Ah, uh, not I kind of forgot about it. <laughs> I remember like season. Two, I always remember season Talk. two was like the part in the manga that I dropped because like they started get like more political drama and it just got it, it just started dragging on. Like there was yeah, not like I, any like cool fights and even though like we did like get cool stuff of like with Levi and um forgot the other guy's name, but like besides that like just a lot of like it just started to drag on. Yeah, season two wasn't like as important. Even though like I mean like, there's there's a lot of things that the first. Part one of season two, I think, was important, but like part two didn't really, wasn't really as good. And then, and then like season three, part one was like a lot of setting up. So, but like I think like part two, of season three, it really paid off. Like, oh yeah. Like I like I felt like after watching like part two of season three, like it it was finally worth like going through all that. Like this finally, this was worth it just to see like all these loose ends getting tied together and setting up for season four. Oh yeah. So, then, I I I put it at number two. I put like oh I put it like number one. Like that's yeah. how important like this, this season was to me. So the only reason why I put it at number two was because Demon Slayer was brand new and it was just so just rock hard solid for people and it was just that's the only reason why it's at number two because Demon Slayer <laughs> no. was just so new. No, it's fine. So that's that's all the praise I can give for now for Attack on Titan and then. We're moving on over to uh, Shield Hero, and I think that was also Stren and Ku. Yes, okay. it was indeed. So, hang off to Ku again. So, what would you like about Shield Hero, and why is it so special for you that stood out this? I mean, it stood out this year. 
Well, for this one, um, it's it's another isekai anime, uh, and I have a thing for isekai animes, but <laughs> same. Uh, I... Well, all right. I mean, <laughs> damn, my, my bad for having certain tastes. All right, that's just how I am. I enjoy. Them. You know, what? sometimes real life just sucks, and you just want to escape. Right? So, so why not escape to a world where they also escape from the real world? True. You know <laughs> right. Come on, man. We oh, watching man. this for the for the realism. Right, we're watching this for the fantasy aspect. All right, something to just escape our lives from. Um, but no, for this one though, uh, the storyline I think was was really well done from beginning to end. Um, if there wasn't going to be a season two, uh, I would be pretty mad. But there is season two and three, and three, and three. Yeah. All right, and three, right? So, so it's nice. So, with that being said, you have something to look forward to in the future. And then you can really relate to the MC in this one because it's not the stereotypical, oh, this guy was summoned to another world. He's OP. He's super popular. Like everything works out in his, uh, like to his way. So this guy gets shitted on from the very beginning and he's just slowly grinding up to be like the herald that he's supposed to be, even though like the world is against him. Uh, his supporting cast, his party. You know, each each of the party member is uh, somewhat important and uh, unique in their own way. Um, yeah, it was just an enjoyable anime to watch. It was a lot of, like, high points, low points. Uh, th- there were some points that made me almost tear up, like Stratton usually does. Um, and, I don't remember uh, any, but... <laughs> oh, okay, sure. But, I'll have my head right now for the show. But, uh, yeah, I just I just find this to be uh, a refreshing take on the, the isekai g- uh, genre. Um, and it, like I said, I think it was, it was well done. And animation was pretty good as well. Um, I had, I didn't really have any complaints about this anime. Okay. So that's the so word. Uh, uh, no, that, sorry, that's Ku's part. Uh, it's Raiden, so... What do you like about okay. Shiro and what makes it stand out in um, 2018? Well, at first, I mean, at the beginning of the show, I didn't like much. I mean, it, this is the first show that I've, I wanted, I, I basically wanted everybody to die the most horrible death in this show that I could imagine. <laughs> like, this, at the beginning of the show, this makes you, it just makes you hate everybody uh, besides the main guy. Like, you just feel so bad for this guy. And you're just, just like, like, I don't even want like him to just feel good. I just want everybody to die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, and then that, that lasted for, Oh my god! I mean, at least half the season, I think. Um, Basically, the whole show, honestly. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, it, it lasted forever. It's also like a, it kind of had like a unique, unique perspective where when you see an isekai, you always see like the main character as just like an OP character. This mm-hmm. one, you end up seeing somebody that has a shield, where it's like he can't, he can do some, he can do things like himself, but he needs a supporting cast. Which, of course, uh, with a show that has to have a supporting cast, they, do, they focus very well and, and explain their story, backstory, everything else. Mm-hmm. very well um it's also uh there the supporting cast is also very unique um i can't i mean usually like i tear up so much from shows but it's been a while now if, since i've watched it and i don't remember i'm sure there was at some point probably um that i probably <laughs> probably teared up at Dude, and like and episode got, and four got, or five it was pretty uh shit got uh, pretty intense oh man okay yeah i'll have to i'll have to go back but uh it's like uh, kind of like this. I mean, I feel like I'm saying kind of like the same thing for like every part that I've said for all the other anime. But it's just like uh, the story. It's uh, the story is different, uh, as different as you can for an isekai. Um, but just like the the main character, where it's just like like I said, where he's just like I mean, he has he has a shield, so there's uh, where he has like really no attack. Um, I don't know. I, it's I would also kind of like piggyback off Ku as well for like if this was just a one. If this was just a one-off, I don't think I would have actually had it in my top five. Um, if we didn't actually get like announced like a top, like a you know second season or a third season, mm-hmm. um, because it just where it ended, I just felt like I mean, it will, I mean, like any kind of like long-running shows or light novels, uh, it ended at the it ended at a point where it's just like there like there's there's got to be more. Like it, it wasn't one of those like where it's just like where you you have like the feeling where it's just gonna be like one like a one season twelve episode thing. And then they just kind of come up with an ending that make it just kind of wrap up and see. I'm like, yeah, this is good enough. Mm-hmm. They actually kind of end it and just like, I think it took them a while to announce the second season, though, didn't they? Like, they didn't announce it right away. Do you remember, David? Or cool? It was announced pretty soon. Like, okay, but it wasn't like right after the episode where I know like a, a lot of shows. It might have been like, like a convention or something, but yeah, okay, it was like a short period. Soon, yeah. soon after it ended, they announced it. So yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, like, like, and also like cool. I like my sickies as well. 
Um, I've, I'm getting more picky with the Sekais just because I've watched so many. Right. Um, so I, I mean, I, I kind of pick up like the the main fan base ones or like the ones that they they they, they like just from like the start they seem like kind of uh, different from all the others and doesn't sound like as you know cheesy or stu- or terrible as like a you know going to a world with a smartphone or some garbage <laughs> like that. Wow, <laughs> yeah, so, I love that one. Way to call it out. Yeah, I didn't. Okay, all right, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I this just is want a positive put my, podcast. Oh, go I ahead, no, Brian, put Brian, go ahead. Two cents for the because go, go ahead, Brian. Th- I would have put this in my top five, but I watched for the entire like year of anime. Like I've seen a decent amount of ones that could like, a little bit higher, but like this show. Oh my god, I'm already getting heated <laughs> thinking about it. Holy shit! <laughs> no spoilers. This show over the 25 episodes, I went through at least two to three waves of just absolutely almost quitting the show entirely because i was getting so gut wretched like just depressed at how dirty they were doing the main character bro i was getting good though oh Oh, i was getting so upset like i i told shred after these episodes instantly i was like bro i really want everybody the show to die and just end the show because it's so hard to watch like i'm over i think there's the first anime i legitimately was cringing at how hard they were shafting the main character so yep. hard yep i was like yo they need to chill out like literally the first five six seven episodes they were just shoving it up his ass i was like yo <laughs> y'all need to chill out and then for every episode after that low point it was just the biggest relief ever and then they go through that same shit again i'm like over, yo, yeah. everybody needs to fucking die right now yep holy the, shit the, like the one positive of this show though that maybe a lot of other shows don't have is there's actually some like uh he, he uh, there's like some redemption where you actually finally when you feel like we have like you finally have like the good feeling we're like thank god <laughs> holy yeah like um, it's, it's like brief moments i don't know if it was worth it for like, the amount of like actually episodes where i'm like everybody just needs to die like i don't even care just yeah, like, yeah it's, it's, yeah. it's so bad like the like this show i i enjoy the show too because like like ku and shren said you you start off a main character and they're instantly getting shafted and you give them like the weakest like off, quote unquote like offensive weapon to a point where, like, he has to rely on other people in order to survive, which is the coolest part about this, because most isekais, I'm pretty sure, like, you come in, you're OP as fuck. The only mm-hmm. person I can think about is, like, Kirito. I'm comparing those two are, like, polar fucking opposite. Mm-hmm. Like, Kirito comes in, just big dicking it up and just <laughs> destroying everybody. <laughs> this dude comes in, and he's just has absolutely nothing and just legit punching shit. It is... Yeah, you know. Like th- this character has such a good payoff when he gets shit done, and it's just the best thing ever. And his party's OP as well. All right, yeah, yeah, OP. We'll go. With so, OP. Uh, yeah, they're, 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 they're OP. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no spoilers. Yeah. Uh, good. Good show. Try my best. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so, about so, so bad. Okay. So it's my turn to get my thoughts on it. So I don't know. So like what everyone's saying about just um, just having the main character getting screwed over. I think that's just like. That's just one of the, the negatives about the show for me is that so I, no I in the beginning I I really I was really interested in the premise I thought it was really like good start just seeing like how much the character main character had to struggle and it was a good it was a good twist on the isekai premise where like usually you do get OP but I felt that uh, a lot of times like I think the author went too much trying to like. He like he went too much trying to make it hard to add like the drama of like having the main character have, the main character having to go through all these different trials just to just to get through like all the shit he's been given and and also like 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 just the other like the other characters like give him shit like like a lot of times it's it's like it's like like one of the, one of the guys or someone else is just being dumb and like that's why like he has to, like like the main guy has to um go through all this shit it's just because like just people are dumb. And that's that always bothers me in in anime. So, like that was like what I was really really annoyed was just like just like it wasn't it didn't felt like like it just felt like the, the author tried too hard trying to make it yeah, hard but, for the main character. That's yeah, that's like the, my biggest thing against like the show. There were some points where I thought like it, it was just too much, you know, in a sense. But at the same time, it was like it 
like I've never had another show where I've been just kind of just so pissed off, like, and I just want yeah, everybody to die the worst possible death. It's just like that the author tried too hard, <laughs> and just like like the characters making it hard for him. Like it was, I, I, I didn't feel like it was justified. Like I didn't mm. feel like the characters actually like just the characters being dumb, and that's why the main character had had to like be hard, like make it hard. Like I just I didn't like that. So gotcha. like okay. like otherwise like I mean. Like over, like I still enjoyed the show too, but like that was like I I, I can't ever put this on my top just because because like th- those are like, the biggest things against it, and like it really annoyed me and just c- kind of left a bad taste in my mouth, like for just just for quality. So that that's just me, and so I maybe, yeah maybe second season will be better. Who knows? So that's we will see. that's just me, and like I can't like that's just too much to to like to put it like just put out any top list for me listen so. if all i'm gonna say is right now if they start off the second season I'm instantly trying to shaft this guy and be so again yeah right i know <laughs> i'm actually I'm gonna be, be so pissed gonna be a little pissed i'm gonna be that's so that's pissed that's off make, that'll make it even worse again because then like then like the author didn't learn his lesson the only thing i guess like for that like i, I definitely thought that they dragged it out way too long and it should have been it should have been shorter than what they had it at uh had it as so i'm, I'm hoping that they covered that part and they just move on to another arc please well, that's that's <laughs> the thing too like because with this show you can never really like predict anything everything was yeah. kind of unpredictable right and i think yeah, I, yeah, that's yeah. what i liked about it. it kept the fresh it kept the original um no matter what happens there's always something that was blocking this guy's way and mm. you know i i enjoy that because like i said i like i like the genre but after watching so many it kind of gets stale and predictable and i wanted something different so yeah. i i actually enjoyed it and the fact that every every arc was an emotional roller coaster you know i think that i think that was nice too it added extra um attachment to it for me so yeah agreed <sighs> I can't. Okay, I, mean, I, I can't. Okay. I can't agree with that. But no, that's. <laughs> but that's that's Ku's opinion. So he's free to have it. There, so. there was. Yeah, there right. Was, <laughs> there was a couple arcs and backstories where I definitely think where, it was it was it was like the same sob story as a lot of other animes, and mm-hmm. I actually kind of wrote that off. And I, I didn't. Where normally, like I would have teared up, but I've seen it so many times that I just kind of like, I wrote it off as just another sob story, and I actually just kind of uh, didn't take it very serious, even though it was supposed to be a pretty like sad dramatic episode. Right, which I, in a way, kind of felt bad about because normally, like, it, like I know they were trying to like hit home or hit like a, uh, uh, the emotional part, but I just I couldn't do it. Too many shows I've seen it where it was it played off as the same thing, but but like I've said before though, if I was a fan of like, uh, Promised Neverland, Villain Saga, or Attack on Titan, I probably would have had them above this. Yeah, probably that's a- from just what I've heard from everybody else. Yeah, so. but I don't I don't watch mainstream. Okay. Not all mainstream. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then, what do you guys have it on your list? Uh, I had it as number two for me. I had it as number five. It's probably like a solid six. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. I'll take that. Take that. <laughs> all right. So that's gonna be it for Shield Hero. Then next one, uh, just another Isekai, over the cautious hero. So yes. cool. Oh, the yes. only one who had this on. So I finished it too. So I'm curious to see what. Q has to say, and then I'll reply it to him. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, I'm a big fan of Isekais because I just like the genre in its own. I like to escape from reality with other fantasy stuff as they're escaping as well, so I I don't know why. Uh, I blame Sword Art because the very first season was great, uh, and it kind of drew me to the genre. Um, But for this one, it's Think of it as a, uh, like, whatever generic isekai anime you could think of. Like, this is the, the, the opposite of that, right? Everything that you can kind of predict or think of that would happen in, in this type of anime, it's kind of the opposite. So for this um, anime, it's kind of hard to explain why it's so good to me without spoiling it. Because it's basically how it ends that really ties it all together for me. And that, that, that's why I think it's like my number one. Like if it wasn't for the way they ended the series, I wouldn't say it's my top five. But the it, it's wrapped up so well together that I, I got to put it as my number one. And then you know how when you're playing video games, right? And then they'll put you into the, the town of beginnings or like a tutorial town. And then you slowly build your way up to 
to to defeat the the last boss. Yeah. So this one, the, if if this guy wasn't as overly cautious as he was, hence the title, right? Yeah. If this guy wasn't like overly cautious as he was, he would have died in the very beginning, in the beginning town, because the 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 final boss of this world. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I know all the newbies are going to start in the in the town of beginnings. So let me just send my strongest guy to that beginning town and just 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 kill him when he gets there. And I was like, wow. Like I can't believe they're like they're kind of like going out of order. So like right off the bat, it's it's different. But because this guy is so so cautious and he takes like everything into consideration of what could possibly happen, uh, he's he's actually ready for this super OP boss that appears in the very beginning. And then from there on, he kind of just slowly uh, defeats all the the high generals, and then he finally makes it to the uh, to the last boss. Uh, but again, like it's it's not the stereotypical isekai anime. Uh, the build up is it's a little bit different, and yeah, the character is slightly OP, but it's not like OP without uh, without equal, like without a rival. Like there's always something that's constantly pushing him to go even further beyond what his current power level is. Um and it and it's pretty funny. It has a little bit of everything. It hits all the check marks for me for Isekai anime. So um that that's why it's my number one. I, I really recommend if you wanna take a look at it in Isekai anime, uh I would give it a shot, see how you like it. Okay. So So that was Ku's thoughts on and why it's his number one, but I, I just have to push back because like so I finished the, thing, the whole thing too and like my main problem so like I did enjoy it so like it's because again it's a nice twist on the isekai formula where like, you're like yeah like the guy's OP but it's because like it, it's not just because the guy's OP it's because like they also play in the tropes too of like other isekais like mm-hmm. the whole like you know starting out to level one and like and of course like it'd be the smart thing for the demon lord to send in a general in the starting town like that's like a smart thing to do and that's that's good that I was making fun of that, but I just feel like it falls in that trap of like, like, yeah, we're trying to make fun of all the tropes, but we're still like in Isekai with all these tropes, so it's hard to like, it's hard to remove exactly. yourself from that. <laughs> no, I I think so many shows like, like try, they t- try to like do like parodies or like they try to like make fun of it, but they still fall into the, the trap themselves. And right, I, right. I think this show does that as well. I think it's it falls in the traps of like just other things, of like just other Isekai tropes so like so like and it's just like a lot of times like i just kept thinking it was like kind of like, like a knockoff like konosuba where like i think konosuba does a really good job of like of just making like the tropes more comedic where here like yeah sometimes it, it is kind of funny but it just sometimes a lot of times it just fell flat for me mm-hmm. and so like i don't know i i can't i don't know i, I can't really like but I will say, like, the last two episodes are really, like, it has a good twist. So, I guess, like, I guess the last two was worth it if you make it that far. So, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I said, if it wasn't for the, the ending of the series, I probably wouldn't place it so high. But the fact that it it, it peaks everything so well together for me, I was like, wow, it, this, this is actually a really good show. So I went, I would never put this at my number one, but, like... But of the year, I mean, hey man, we all have different opinions. <laughs> I, I can never, I can never put this in number one. But like, I will like say like the last two episodes were good. But like again, like it's hard, it's hard just recommending this. Like especially like since we're all so saturated of isekais, like it's hard just like, I mean, I guess maybe like you're looking for something like a different isekai, sure. But mm-hmm. even then, like, like. Just, just like in general, like if you were trying to recommend this to an anime fan, like maybe you would, but like besides that, like it's like it doesn't go like above and beyond. Like I, I it doesn't go like like Konosuba levels. Like that one, like that one, like I would recommend people even if like they don't like isekais because I think it does a good job for the comedy. Mm-hmm. Here it's like a little, it's a little harder. Like it just, it just falls more flat for me. So, but I do think though for isekais, like or for just the anime fans in general, I think. I think almost every anime fan has gotta like like them at some like some some level. Or at I least don't know about an, that, there's, Sren. There's an isekai at least for everybody. Like there's dark ones, there's you know comedy, there's ridiculous comedy ones. I guess uh, they, 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 they're all across the board. Like I think it like any isekai can fit anybody's interest. You just have to find it. 
yeah that's why i mentioned like if you if you want to get isekai anime i would recommend give it a shot um uh, but, but that's, like that's just but there's so many like, like it's isekai. it's, it's right. just hard to recommend another one no bob that's what i'm saying like there's so many but if you want something that's kind of different that's not like the generic usual uh it's kind of anime i would give this a shot and i think you'd enjoy it if you really like it's kind of animes it's all it's also hard to like to just to tell people like like the last episodes are really good so you have to you should wait till then it's like that's, that's hard like ask for people like no but that's the thing it didn't really a long time to wait it didn't take the last two episodes to make it enjoyable. I think I enjoyed it uh, from the third episode on. But I think like the first it, two episodes, was... I don't know, just like the last two, it it really elevates like the the series in, in general. So like it's it's like yeah, like if you don't like it, but I guess like just a couple episodes, like you're not gonna like it in general. And so like that's why mm-hmm. I just say it's, it's hard to recommend this to people. Yeah, I'd say it starts picking up on episode three, three onwards. Because uh, that's when it caught my attention, really. Because I watching this anime, I didn't, I wasn't really expecting much. Uh, but from the third or fourth episode on, it started to catch my attention. And then from that point, I started slowly ramping up and getting better and better and better. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say it took it to episode eleven or twelve for it to actually get good. For me, it got yeah. good from from the beginning. It just it just ended and wrapped it up really well towards the end. I don't know. I don't know. It's just like I just just the. Just in general it just there's just a lot of like like it just couldn't escape from the tropes it was trying to make fun of that's that's all i'm saying like it's okay man you're harsh on isekais man that's that's isekai you're expecting you're expecting too much from isekais man no i have to be like (laughs) at the level of isekai though would you say it's higher than other ones just barely like david like I, it, like I would still like like rate like you know like like ReZero, like Overlord Saga of Tanya like all those above this so dude it's okay man you didn't have it in your top five back up <laughs> this isn't your second I have, I have to, no I have to push back so this is this is something I have to push back because I I cannot agree right, fine, with it so as a massive fan of the Sikais, I back up Koo. Mm, mm. okay so but that, then that's... I also like harm trash so yes. Exactly, but so, harm so, is trash. So that's Not just guys. <laughs> okay. So that's just my t- that's so that was just my 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 pushback. But that was also that was Ku's number one pick was Ori Kasha's Hero, and then we're move on next to Fruits Basket. Uh, Fruits Basket. This was Taylor's pick, so we need to hear from her. Yeah, uh, Fruits Basket is a very big title. Get the name right. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to ask real quick. This is the remake, right? Uh, yeah. And is this the same as, is this the same as the older series, or they change it a little bit, or what happened? So when people describe it as Fruits Basket Brotherhood, that's a pretty accurate okay. description, because the first season was also accurate to the manga, but it just cut off because there was no more manga available. Um, so why I call it Brotherhood for this turnaround is because it's it's just better in every way. Oh, is I it? I mean, it's been a, well, it's been a really long time since I watched it, but. I put this one at my number three because I felt like the voice acting was so much better. It's just incomparable. I'm sure that there are people who are upset that there aren't the voice actors. I haven't looked. I don't care. But I'm sure. I mean, it was so much better than what I remember. Um, Additionally to that, the animation was tenfold better. And I felt like the... I mean, for, for anybody who's familiar with Fruits Basket, I mean, this is the exact same plot as the first season. It goes through exactly the same things. There's nothing that's different. Um, but the way that they go into the backstory of a lot of the, um, like, back characters is done much better. You care about them a lot more. I would even go into the episodes thinking, oh, this person again. But then I would inevitably get into it by the end of the episode. Um, and so I think they just... I, I, I'm not sure how they did it. I, obviously, the better voice acting, better animation, but overall, just the writing was better for this season. And then at the end of the season, it went, I think, maybe a chapter or two beyond where the original season ended, from what I remember, because it, it was not there in the original season. Oh, and I feel like it actually wrapped up the whole series of this season a lot better um, and made you excited for what was going to come next. And it also introduced which I thought was interesting, some of the darker elements of Fruits Basket, which 
it doesn't seem like a show that would have dark elements, but it really does. And it introduced them a little bit earlier on in this season than it did um, in the original version, just in subtle ways. And so overall, I would say, yeah, it, it's called like the Shoujo royalty for a reason. It's fantastic. And um, anybody who might be interested in shoujo really should just give it a shot and even if you're not i'm not a shoujo fan at all by any means it's my last pick um but this one is really well done so wait, is this is fruit is fruit back is it done like like no nope. it's, it's still ongoing or no nope, it's still gonna be ongoing i okay. believe they already announced the second season but they were intending to go through with it so okay. if it isn't if the date's not announced yet it will be i think it's supposed to be spring is it but I'll, I'll check no, no, no. Yeah, you're right. It is spring. Um, they'll continue on with that, and there will probably be a, a season or two after that. So, was there? So, from this first season that aired compared to the first season that aired a long time ago, was there a lot of mm -hmm. changes? Compared to, no, it's really pretty the same. It's just it. I feel like somehow the way the the direction of the episodes went, it was a little bit more well planned out. So it had all the same plot, but the characters were fleshed out much better. Because if you're if, if you like in Fruits Basket, you have your main female character, and that's Toru, and then the the guys she moves in with, and those are kind of the main characters. And in the first season, she has a whole other life too, and her friends and um, things that made her who she is at the start of the anime. And I feel like in the original version, those really weren't delved into, and in this season, they are. So it's not that you're really getting more story, but you're getting more backstory, and I actually do feel like that's really beneficial to the series. So you would say that, like, if someone wanted to watch Fruit Basket for the first time, you recommend this series over the the older one? Yep, absolutely. Okay. And I, and I say that because, like, I compared it to Brotherhood, and I would say that, like, if you're looking for just, like, a quick, you want to get into Fullmetal Alchemist, you would watch Brotherhood versus the first season, even though I think that the first season has its benefits for sure. Um, for Fruits Baskets, I, I, I would say that it's definitely the, the the new remake that you would just want to watch. You don't need to have to go back to the first one. Okay. And that was my number three. Number it was three. really well done. <laughs> All right. So that's that's it for Fruits Basket. And then uh, move on to our next one, our next pick, uh, Diamond No Ace. And that's bring back to Koo. Oh, yes. So uh, I also like a lot of sports animes because, you know, I used to play sports back in my old days when I was younger. I just um, want, want to say, like, Mr. Fancy Guy over here is talking about <laughs> sports, but go ahead. No. So wait, you mean to tell me that when you when you were younger or like currently, you never thought about like had dreams about how you're the ace and you did this amazing thing. No, and I was never you... athletic, so I never had those delusions it's, it's okay ku i can relate 100 percent. actually right so. you know because i used to play soccer i used to play volleyball i used to play golf or i used to play uh football and it's it's one of those things where it's like like man you know i had this dream like before the day of a game and it's like uh, i want to be that guy that that makes the last touchdown or make this crazy bicycle kick uh goal uh, you know, you know I mean, the guy who shoots the last shot, the buzzer. Right, shoot the last guy, the buzzer shot. Like, like I want those moments, right? And then I never really had those in like when I was playing sports. I had a few good moments, but nothing like extremely epic, like you see in these uh, sports animes. And uh, you know, I like I like the feeling of being hyped up. I like the feeling of camaraderie. Um, I like the underdog stories. You know, so I do watch a lot of sports animes, and maybe I do try to tie it to my real life experience but uh it's just cool to kind of see it and like animate it right and uh for for the year 2019 um i felt like i had to add a sports anime and diamond o ace was the one for me uh so this is the second season and the uh i think the first season was a couple years ago uh but for the second season it more it more focuses on the main character um that kind of got shafted in the first season uh so for this one it's a baseball anime they're high schoolers and the ace of a baseball team is usually the pitcher and then in this in this series uh they have two ace pitchers but uh the mc was kind of shafted as in like he wasn't really the first pick he was more of just the the backup pitcher and then I felt like he was more unique. The character had more to offer than the the, the main ace in season one. And with the whole 
uh, events happening in season one and moving over to season two, like it was finally this guy's time to shine. And he's he's more well polished now. He's more mature. He's not uh, just some freshman that wants to be a big shot. Uh, he's a really likable guy. Um, so I think the MC is what drew me more to this anime. And then the way that the story is written and how there's an extremely good support cast um, that that backs him up as well. Um, it, it's really enjoyable. Like every week, I, I can't wait to watch the new episode and see what's going to go on because it's not like uh, something that's, um, I want to say, there's always going to be progression with, with, the, with the MC now. So I, I want to see him succeed. I want to see him do well. And he he's so unique that I think he's a really good uh, sports anime MC. So, so is uh, this a is this an ongoing show then? Yes, it is still currently ongoing. It comes okay. out on Tuesdays, like on Black Clover. So I actually look forward to this more than Black Clover. I mean, that's not a shocker. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. So, like I said, every every episode this season has been like, oh man, I want more. I want more. Right. So it, it always seems to deliver of course like i said it does have a big supporting cast and i think they're all well done but sometimes you know you just want to watch your main guy succeed and you want to know more about him but you know it, it can't always be about one guy there's no i in team right so um so i was gonna ask wasn't this like a really old manga oh i have no idea but I, the the first season was a couple of years ago i feel like i've like i've heard diamond no ace like for forever like when people recommend like People always mm. recommend like the manga, so I, I always felt like because I think the art style it's like it's older, isn't it? Like, it looks more ninety style. Yeah, I'd say so. So I think but then with a... sports animes, you can't really like I don't really pay much attention to it because I'm not really looking at it for the okay, animation. So I think I think it's an older show, but I did I definitely right. heard about Demon, uh, Diamond No Ace before for the manga, mm. so I can see I've seen a lot of people recommend this. I just want to mention too. There's there's a lot of like baseball, like mangas and shows in general. So I just want to know, yeah. like, compared to like all the other like baseball shows, how would this rank in comparison? The manga, to them? the manga went from 06 to to fifteen. Oh, okay, so it's so it's newer. Okay, I thought it was older for some reason, but not that old. Yeah. Um, you know, from all the other ones I've watched, I've actually enjoyed this one the most. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. -ho. This is Haikyuu. Uh, I mean, high Q for sure. <laughs> um, oh my God. I just, I had, to, I'm just, I have to advertise the show. Man. <laughs> no, I mean, high Q for sure. As a but... previous hater of anim of uh of sports shows and a uh, high Q. <laughs> well, that's the thing too, though. Uh, I'm more biased because I actually played volleyball and I like volleyball a lot. I've never actually played oh, okay. baseball, so oh, I've actually, fair. I've hated, I've actually hated watching baseball, but I would love to play baseball, but I've never played on a sports team. Uh, so maybe that's why I'm a little more biased towards high Q. But with high Q, it also gets got you more more pumped up. So uh, compared to baseball, I feel like for so. volleyball because there's I guess there's six players instead of like nine on the field. Mm -hmm. Like there's like less characters to keep track of too. So, but well, baseball there's a lot more than that. Um, I don't know. But I mean, but there's, yeah, there's, there's, there's always there's, just, there's like the backups too. So it just mm -hmm. seems less because there's only one person you know that's uh, actually go at bat, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a few more people in the field <laughs> so. right but no yeah uh, no there, there's a lot to watch uh, like i said everything seems to be well done and if you like sports animes i think it's enjoyable to watch nice and what did you say was the number on your, on your list this was number four number four all right mm -hmm. so so that's so that's our cool thoughts for diamond no ace and then move back to taylor uh give us her thoughts on given you should probably explain what Given is, too, because I think this is the first time most people heard of it. <laughs> yeah, this isn't really a shonen or a really overly advertised show, but Given is basically um, a story about, well, well overall, it's a, a boy's love anime. But um, the reason why I put it on my list is a little bit of a bias, because I wanted people to know about it, because that genre tends to be kind of riddled with a lot of negative connotations um, just because of like um, certain aspects that show up in a lot of the other anime. I'm not going to go into all of that. I'm going to just focus on the positives of Given. And the reason I put it on my list was um, overall, I think it was a, it's good for anybody who likes BL, but it's also good for anybody who likes a good romance. It has a lot to do with 
overcoming past relationships and not even just overcoming them, but like it, it's, it's hard to talk about without giving away spoilers, but there's a little bit of a complication to it. And so it's a BL, but it has a lot more to do with overcoming trauma from your past. And it's done very well through the anime. All the characters are very well fleshed out and it overcomes a lot of common BL tropes, which I think you, that you guys aren't too common with. But uh, maybe. I, experience I, <laughs> I assume it's just like regular like, romance stuff. Like, well, it's romance. One really common criticism of BL is that they tend to be kind of um, trying to think of a less critical word, but a little uh, rapey. <laughs> I mean, that's that's it's, like that's a criticism of shoujo as well. So, is it really? I actually didn't know that because I watched almost no shoujo. <laughs> A lot of times, like it's like a lot, like in shoujo, like so a lot of the guys are pushy, like really pushy, oh, really? and so. Okay. Like, well, that's a common theme in BL as well, and yeah. this one just avoided that entirely. It wasn't even an issue. It was very sweet. Um, but the thing that I really liked about it was the fact that there are a couple of different couples that are going through personal awakenings. There's one person who's going through um a deceased former lover and moving on with his life there's a lot of other things that are going on that are relatable to a much wider crowd and the actual bl aspect is quite um you know it, it's really not focused on at all and so it's actually a, it has a lot of a music anime kind of feel to it because that's the main plot they're all part of a band and they're um just forming and learning how to work together and as they're doing this they realize all of their backstories and i I, re I really recommend this one just because it's a feel-good anime and i think that in terms of personal growth and realistic characters i think that this is a great example because sometimes anime doesn't really have very realistic characters uh, or it overemphasizes them but this one is very relatable and the anime leaves off a about midway through where the manga is at currently and so if anybody was interested in that they could go on to the manga very easily one thing that's really great about watching the anime is that because it is a music anime they're all in a band it's a little awkward to read in the anime so, or to read in the manga sometimes because it's just somebody singing but you can't hear anything <laughs> so there's a lot of panels of awkwardness um but in the anime you actually get to hear it and i think that's a really great step up um yeah so like i said i mean i haven't i didn't watch uh, attack on titan this season so if i'd watched attack on titan it would probably be on the list but i wanted to add given in because i think it was just a underrated anime for people who are interested in that sort of genre nice Ash, i was gonna ask too so like is the music like important at all or is it just mainly like the romance for the show is um like if you're like if you want to watch a music show would you still like or is so, it, it was just like mainly just like it's just there just like this is what they do but it's, it's mainly the romance i'm gonna compare it to yuri on ice here uh yuri on ice is much more about it's the more ice about, skating more aspect else, skating than like the romance is so what was that so you're saying like yeah you're on ice is more about the skating yep, than the yep. Romance. i would say that's more of a sports anime this is not a music anime okay. i would say this is much more about people and okay. it's much more of a shoujo um yeah Alright. And then what was the number on your list? Uh I put this one at five. Five? Okay. Alright, and so and so that's that's all the shows we've um that we put on our list. So we're just gonna go around real quick and just have everyone give their top fives again. So we're gonna start at the top yeah. left with Brian. So Brian, what was your, your top five of twenty nineteen? Uh, Demon Slayer, Attack on Titan, Promise Neverland, Smop Psycho 2, and Midland Saga. All right, and then Stren, what was your top five of 2019? For me, starting from five and going up, uh, Shield Hero, Hero Academia, Dr. Stone, Demon Slayer, and Mob Psycho. All right, and then Taylor, what was your top five? Starting at five, Given, four, Midland Saga, three, Fruits Basket, two, Demon Slayer, and one, Promise Neverland. All right, and then Ku. Okay, so my number one was Overly Cautious Hero, and going down, it was Shield Hero, Demon Slayer, Diamond No Ace Season 2, and Dr. Stump. All right, and then Sasha. Number one, Mob Psycho Season 2, 2, Demon Slayer, 
three, One Piece, four, <laughs> Finland Saga, and five, My Hero Academia. All right. And then for my list, uh, number one for me was Attack on Titan Season 3 Part 2. And then number two was Villain Saga. Number three was Demon Slayer. Number four was Mob Cycle Season 2. And then number five was Promise Neverland. So that's the list we had for 2019. I'd say overall it was a pretty good year for anime. This was, we didn't really start the podcast till fall, so you don't really hear much of our thoughts. So <laughs> hopefully next year... <laughs> do better uh we'll hear more of our thoughts on all these other shows and maybe do this again uh just for next year for our top shows of 2020 so that's gonna be it for us from today uh we normally do a weekly show where we actually talk about the spoilers of all the episodes that aired that week so look out for that but until then we're just, uh and right here so i'll see you guys later on our regular shows bye 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 bye, bye. bye. Bon, bon, bon. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>